They're not just, uh, as they're taught in classrooms, novels and epics. They are sacred texts working out the mythology of these lonely individuals questing for the infinite experience that is part of the way of man because the emphasis on the way of man is not to rely on authority. We are consistent with breaking out of the whole world of the cavern. We want to break away from authority. And Northern European civilization, this quest into the darkness of the forest on your own, by yourself, is this idea of you finding your own myth for yourself on your own. And authority is never to be trusted. It is to be questioned. And so we have this tradition that makes most of the traditional cultures of the world very uncomfortable when uh, confronted with this idea because we're very critical of our teachers. We're critical of our parents. We're critical of our teachers because of this myth, this myth that your uh, life is you're sort of a species unto yourself and there's a myth in there somewhere inside you that will guide and shape your life and the idea is for you to find that. And that is what the myth of the Grail Quest is. That's why Campbell says, uh, when you look at these uh, Grail Quest myths, it says, uh, each of the knights went off into the forest alone where it was darkest and where there was no way or path already. So each one has to make his own path. And periodically, one of the ones will come across the path of the other knight, and they'll follow it for a while, but they'll be led astray, and things will get more difficult for them. So this is the idea of the central mythology of uh, Faustian uh, Northern European civilization. And then the one other aspect that I want to uh, bring by you with respect to Campbell is um, with respect to this middle slot here, the way of the celestial powers. He looks at, uh, the ge geographically speaking, he looks at the Earth. And he says you can divide it up as it stands today into four domains, four great domains, each having its own primary signature, analogous to Spengler's idea of each civilization having its own primary indwelling idea. So he says you have China, this is geographically here, moving from China to India to the Levant, which uh, includes the, all the Near Eastern cultures, the Judeo-Christian Islamic culture world, and then Europe. And by Europe, he includes the Greeks in with uh, the Faustian Northern European cycle. And he says, uh, as you spin the globe and look at these geographically, the divide right here between West and East is Persia on over. And there's a whole different mentality from Persia on over than you find from India going in the other direction. And the primary culture figure in India is the Buddha. Because the Buddha personifies this idea that the eyes are closed and the Hindus have gone inward to find the ultimate ground of being. We in the West, on the other hand, have rejected that idea, essentially, and have gone outward, ironically not knowing that the destiny idea is unfolding from within. And so that in our outward quest, we're sort of going out into the world to find what is already inside of us. Uh, Heinrich Zimmer used to tell this wonderful little uh, parable of this Jewish rabbi who one day uh, received a dream that told him to go find uh, this pot of gold that, that would be located under this specific bridge in uh, Prague. So he goes to the bridge in Prague and he's looking around and uh, there's this guard who walks over the bridge. It's a very Kafkaesque story. Kafka was living in Prague when he wrote his work. And he's the, the guard is there. And the guard sort of asks him, uh, what are you doing here? And uh, the Jewish uh, rabbi goes, uh, oh, nothing. I, uh, I just had this dream, and, um, and I'm just sort of following it, what it told me to do. And uh, without telling him what the dream is, uh, the guard says, well, that's silly. If I listen to my dream, if we all listen to our dreams, who knows what we do? I mean, I had this dream uh, just the other day that if I visited the house of Rabbi so-and-so, I would find behind his stove this pot of gold. He turns out to be the rabbi. He goes back to his house, looks behind the stove. There's the gold. So that's, in a certain sense, um, in the West, what we've done is we've gone out into the outer world to find what's been inside of our souls all along. And, um, but the Hindus didn't bother with the outer quest into the outer world. They just stayed right where they were at, sat in yoga posture, and dropped down in. And then uh, with respect to China, we have, again, the Tao and uh, the sort of wandering way and the, the Chinese sage, you know, the sort of the um, Lao Tzu or Confucius. Uh, here the eyes are open and the Chinaman is out in the world wandering through the world. The, uh, there's not so much of an introverted out emphasis in Chinese culture as there is in Indian civilization. Uh, They're wandering through the world, eyes open. Then in the Levant, the primary figure is Job. And um, the primary figure in Europe is Prometheus. And the contrast between them is immediately evident and so far as we have this myth of the questioning of authority because the primary ending of Job is that, uh, well, let's look at the story of Job. What happens? 
uh, here's God and he's sort of hanging out uh, watching television or whatever and Satan uh, comes in and disturbs him and says you know I bet you if you tested Job this person who was so loyal and faithful to you um, I bet you if you tested him he would turn against you and then as God's thinking about it and he says no 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 Job is the most faithful servant that I have no, nothing I could ever do to him would turn him away from me but then he starts having doubts about it so indeed, he does go, and he starts causing, uh, remember the, the destiny idea of the Magian culture is that everything comes from God. So Job starts having all of these misfortunes. Uh, he loses family members, loses his money, loses fortunes, loses everything. Uh, just everything is sort of melted down around him. Then his friends show up and go, what's this all about? What have you done to piss God off so much? And then he's like, well, you know, I don't know. I've been completely faithful to God. There's nothing I've done here that would justify this happening to me. And which is actually the case. The reason why he's being tested is precisely because he's been faithful, ironically. And uh, so what ends up happening is uh, Job demands a witness for him against God, but no such witness is, of course, available. So in a sense, God appears to him as in a kind of epiphany, and he says, Who are you, you little worm, to question me? Were you there in the beginning when I slew the great dragon Leviathan and hung it up on a hook? I mean, who are you to question me? And so he sort of bullies him into submission, and Job says, you know, mine eyes have seen, my ears have heard, I submit. That's the idea of Islam, which means submission to the will of God. That's the idea of kismet, that destiny comes from God, and that is the idea of the Levantine submission to authority that is absolute and that is completely at odds with our European questioning of authority that is personified by the myth of Prometheus, which originates first with the Greeks. The Greeks are the first to begin to question this idea that maybe the authority should be questioned. Maybe it isn't something that we should just rely on blindly. And so in the Prometheus tale, as it's told uh, in the version of Aeschylus, Prometheus is sort of nailed to this uh, to the Caucasus, and uh, um, he says, uh, Zeus can do as he likes. I care nothing for him. He can send me whatever plague he wants, but I, I have done what I have done because I wanted to do it. And so there's this radical defiance of man of the gods. Man in the West has defied the gods, has defied authority, and has set off on the quest into the unknown. And uh, as a result, we've got what we're in right now, which is, of course, positive and negative. But that's, uh, that's sort of Campbell in a brief uh, sort of overview. And you can see very much how uh, he comes out of Spangler and the Spanglerian tradition. So then, uh, Moving right along then.